Again, welcome. I'm gonna hand it over to Ms. Elaine Sterling to take us into Acne Solutions. Thank you, Josh. So um, first I wanna start with acne is something that's gonna be a huge part of your practice. So when I um, was doing skincare um, in my own practice about 12 years ago, I had a, uh, a gentleman, he was about 17, he was a track star at high school, and he had the worst acne. If I tell you the acne was like um, you know, an episode of Dallas, think of like an oil slick, like just everything, every pore I extracted had blackheads, um, you know, uh, comedones, excess oil, um, he had pustules. So I made him come and see me every two weeks. I'm just discussing a case study that I had. So he would come every two weeks to, um, to see me. And um, it was kind of cute because he didn't want to go to an esthetician, but he was willing to go to a dermatologist. So his mom would always say, okay, it's time for you to go to your dermatologist. And then she would you know, drive up to my building and he also made her swear that if she spoke to his friends that he was going to the dermatologist. So that was kind of cute, but I would see him every two weeks because not only did he have acne, um, he also was obviously running every single day. So there was a lot of sweat on his face and being out in the environment, etc. So I needed his commitment of coming every two weeks and I devised a plan. And let me tell you something, my plan for his acne changed every two weeks because sometimes it was better sometimes it was worse sometimes it would break out in other areas but i had to do extractions and my thought process was that if i don't do these extractions every two weeks he's going to do these extractions so we're going to be learning today understanding acne what treatments can we do in an aesthetic level because i'm talking about the aesthetic treatment room um, a thorough and correct skin analysis, and then devising a treatment plan at home as well as um, in the treatment room. Because your clients, if you're working on acne, they cannot then go home and just be using soap on their face or nothing. You know, you've got to partner with at-home skincare to treat this. So acne vulgaris, also con uh, referred to as acne, is a disorder of the pilosebaceous follicle. So we get a blockage of the follicle, of the hair follicle, um, with sebum, dirt, debris, makeup, um, whatever the case may be. And then we have our blackheads, pustules, um, even um, cystic acne as well. So we have acne, 90% of ad adolescents have acne, right? They may see it as young as 10, 11, but acne is, is um, something that can play a role as far as genetics go. But I wanna tell you, I remember when I was 25 and eventually the acne started to subside. In my 30s, I started to get acne again, especially on the chin area. And I went to my doctor crying. I'm like, I'm an esthetician. I can't believe. And it, they were very angry, sore cystic acne on my chin. She was like, oh, well, congratulations. You're now into perimenopausal acne. So we have the, the obviously the adolescent teenage acne. We have the perimenopausal acne. We have the postmenopausal acne. And then, of course, we have... Um, Underlying issues that happen, for example, we have acne that, um, that can cause um, hyperpigmentation, can cause um, you know, uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation because there is a wound there and the epidermal dermal juncture, the melanocyte is reacting to that, that wound, so, so it carries on. So you can see um, breakout of acne at any age. All right, so now we have um, grade one acne, which will be basically open and closed comedones with an occasional pustule. And certainly with people with combination skin, I think you're gonna see that. Um, then you're gonna have large 
grade two would be large amount of comedones and a few papules and or pustules. Then grade three, this is the um, gentleman that I had um, at 17 years old, large number of open and closed comedones, many papules and pustules. And then you can have cystic acne that can cause scar formation. And so people with that grade four cystic acne, we can't extract them. We don't want to spread acne, so we really need them to go see their dermatologist or their primary care so that we can kind of work together and format a plan. All right, so what are we seeing on the skin? We are seeing increased sebum production, which could be influenced by androgens, which I'm going to discuss later on. Keratin and sebum plague in the hair follicle that can accumulate. P. acne bacteria that proliferate into the sebaceous follicle that release enzymes, and these enzymes stimulate and release pro-inflammatory cytokines, and that of course you have an inflammatory response. So the situation that I'm seeing is that I see um, minimize that, sorry, see. I see um, inflammation on the skin. I see redness. I see reds and browns on the skin. So I'm seeing bacteria as well as inflammation. So again, this is an inflammatory response. So we've got to make realize that we're dealing with um, bacteria, inflammation, reds, and even browns on the skin. Right, so let's talk about the term cytokine. This is derived from a combination of two Greek words, cyto, meaning cell, and kinos, meaning movement. So cytokines are cells signaling molecules that aid cell-to-cell -cell communication in immune responses and stimulate the movement of cells towards sites of inflammation, infection, and trauma. Cytokines exist in peptide protein and glycoprotein proteins with a sugar attached forms. The cytokines are a large family of molecules that are classified in various different ways due to the absence of unified classification system. Pilosebaceous follicle, there are three kinds of pilosebaceous follicles in the dermis. Vellus follicle comprising of tiny hairs, much larger than sebaceous glands. Sebaceous follicles comprising of tiny hair, terminal hair comprising of long, stiff, thick hair. So the sebaceous follicles are the only ones involved in acne, although the other types contribute to the amount of lipid on the surface of the skin. Sebaceous follicles are found only on the face, upper arms, chest, upper back, and acne can only occur in these areas. Sebaceous glands throughout the body include those in the sebaceous follicles, Produce, produce sebum, an oily substance consisting of a mixture of fats, cholesterol proteins, and salts. Sebum spread from the sebaceous follicle onto the hair and skin. It prevents hair from drying out and keeps the skin supple. It, is, it, is, it also inhibits the growth of certain bacteria. So I preach this all the time, that an oily skin is a healthy skin. <clears throat> an oily skin is a healthy skin. So we want to be able to maintain the healthy skin. We don't want to strip the skin of too much oil. What will that do? That will ignite and make the skin produce more oil. We also want to stop, stop the spread of any bacteria on the skin. So what is your client's concern? Does she not like the shininess of her skin? But remember, too much of a good thing sometimes is not a good thing. And I'll discuss that in further slides. All right, hormones definitely influence acne, right? Excess sebum, oil gland production are influenced by hormones. And that's why you will see, you know, as we get older, <clears throat> no, I'm only 27, so <laughs> I'm in my 50s now. So as the estrogen levels reduce um, and the androgen levels um, increase, that's when you could see some fluctuations of acne on the skin. 
And then of course, an inc increased number of acne causing bacteria, which we call those P acnes. Skin inflammation, definitely. Remember I always say to you, the first indication of the disease is inflammation, 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 right? I should start a rap song. The roles of androgens. Androgens, the male hormones present in both men and women, can contribute to acne flares by overstimulating the oil glands and altering the development of skin cells that line hair follicles in the skin. The majority of women with acne have normal androgen levels, but hormonal testing is recommended for females who have acne um, accompanied with excess facial hair on their face or body, a deepening voice, <clears throat> or irregular or infrequent menstrual periods. So there's a lot of factors that contribute to acne, but we do know this one thing, that acne definitely is something that we can see, regardless of what's going on hormonally and inside of our body. And I think that this having acne is, has a psychological and emotional um, um, consequence, as you were, because people who have <clears throat> inflammation, you know, when you have pustules or <clears throat> comedones on the skin, it's very hard to cover up with makeup. And we don't want oils and um, chemicals <clears throat> and um, fragrances in products. We do not want them to be irritating the skin further. So mineral makeup is a good idea. And of course, um, oil-free products. We do not want to use oils that are comedogenic or clog the pore, even though some oils, believe it or not, are very helpful to acne. Okay, so we have those um, P acnes, propion bacterium. The bacteria that causes pimples, pustules are called P acnes. These bacteria live on the skin all the time. They become a problem only when the, the pore becomes blocked. And this happens when excess oil or sebum mixes with dead skin cells to form a plug. So classifications of acne. We have open comedones. We can see that we can extract those and they look black on the surface. I like to use, um, I don't use a comedone extractor. You certainly can use one. And I think if you're an expert at using a comedone extractor, remember they have to be sterilized, okay? Very important. That's why I like to use as many disposable things as I can as possible in the treatment room. I want to tell you when I'm working with acne, I wear gloves and, and a mask at all times, especially now. But an eye shield is very, very important because if you do extractions, we know that they can shoot quite high. A magnifying lamp is extremely important to protect you, but so is a face shield, an eye shield, because you never want the pustula or the bacteria that's in the skin to be shooting up and squirting into your eye. That may sound scary. I know it's happened. I know it happens. And that's a whole nother drama that you don't want to deal with. So protect yourself and protect the client. Wear your eye shield, use a mag lamp as a barrier, wipe down that mag lamp and that lamp between clients. I use gloves and um, I like to use tissues because I am able to grip the skin. I also like to use Q-tips, um, but if you are um, proficient and love an extractor, go right ahead. Try not to cause too much drama, too much pressure on one area could spread bacteria. Also, it's gonna have to be sterilized in an EPA registered um, like a barbicide, or if you do have a sterilizing unit that uses steam to totally, like they use in hospitals, to totally kill everything, then that's important too. Um, of course, we have inflammatory papules. Um, you can't extract a papule. Nodules and cysts, we can't extract those. Uh, comedones, um, if they closed, that's gonna be um, difficult. Um, of course, inflammatory pustules. Um, using a lancet, we're not supposed to use a lancet in Georgia, so I'm not gonna tell you to do it, and I'm not gonna, what I'm gonna say is look at your license, Look at your scope of practice, look at your State Board of Cosmetology and Barbering regulations, and then look at your insurance, and then do you have a medical director 
are there certain things you can do under his license? So I'm always going to go back to scope of practice. I'm always going to go back to what are you licensed to do? And of course, what, are, what does your liability insurance allow you to do as far as tools go? And are you insured? And always have a signed consent. Scarring is a huge problem. Um, ice pick scarring. They look like somebody has been jabbed with an ice pick and they always look open. Microneedling, um, and if you are a Fitzpatrick one or two, plasma lift, I think is quite helpful. Um, so you do have different <clears throat> tools, microdermabrasion, chemical peels, um, acne pit, slightly sunken, sunken pimple or cyst has destroyed the skin and formed scar tissue. Raised lumpy masses of scar tissue on the skin surface caused by cysts clumping together. So these are a problem. So definitely going to have to have um, a medical doctor assist you with um, dealing with um, definitely the acne rays and some of the acne pit scarring. So they, that's why we want to. That's why we want the client to come to us before we get to the scarring stage, because then we're dealing with scars as well as um, bacteria as well as follicle blockage um so we, we you know we're dealing with a lot of things but tell your clients this is going to take a little bit of time not a lot of time you're going to see some great result results in the beginning but let's see you every two weeks so you know the doctors say that you know eating pizza and burgers do not cause acne i get that but I can tell you now that Josh knows, everybody knows me, anti-inflammatory counter irritant ingredients in our skincare is huge. Ingredients and, and, and products that we eat is important to skin health. Because I always say what's going on on the skin is a roadmap to what's going on inside the body. And the only way you really know if any of these products are causing allergic reactions, of course, is to go to an allergy clinic. But I will tell you that it's a no brainer to stop eating less processed food or junk food. So what does that mean? Is the food, was it alive once? And is it practically alive on your plate, right? A broccoli is a broccoli, okay? If they've turned it into something else, it may not be broccoli anymore. Um, I'm, I'm not a junk food eater. I will tell you a wood fire pizza and, is, and once a year, um, I, I, I got to go say hi to Chick-fil-A. So, you know, we do need to live our lives, but I think we need to really look at what we're putting inside our bodies. Um, and these are just zones according to, um, Eastern medicine about what is going on on the face could be a roadmap. Right, you can't say, oh, area six, I need you to go ahead and you know check your blood pressure, right? So, but we can look at, hey, maybe we need to, um, especially for somebody with rosacea, you know, less spicy food, less alcohol, you know, less steam on the face. Definitely with acne and hormones, definitely dark leafy veggies, a lot of omegas, salmon. And, and those fatty acids are huge. Dr. Pericone has an acne diet. He is a doctor. Dr. Wheel will have an acne diet as well. And so, you know, don't take my word for it, um, but definitely those nuts and avocados. I hate avocado. I, I don't know what it is. It's a texture thing. So me and avocados and bananas, we, um, we part company, but it's a texture thing. But I really um, believe in your dark leafy vegetables and your good fats and your nuts and your flaxseed. Um, and then look at non comedogenic ingredients, non comedogenic oils, and non comedogenic um, products that we're putting on the skin. Um, and um, so I'm gonna go over some ingredients in the later slides. Um, and also, you know, digestion is important, zone 13. Because, you know, if you're not doing a number two, then, you know, you, you may see some congestion in the skin. So this is a guide. 
let's look at a person holistically, what skincare they're using at home, what are we doing in the treatment room, what are they eating, you know, stopping dairy, do they see, do they see good results on their skin? If not, and, they, and, they, and then they start eating in dairy and they see a problem. Again, that's why working with an allergy um, doctor um, can really be helpful there. Um, for example, um, I sometimes will have a breakout from shrimp um, and then sometimes I'll eat shrimp and I'll not have a breakout. So I don't know. I definitely know that when I use enzymes on my skin, I get like blotchiness and like almost like hives. So I kind of know without going to a doctor certain things that really seem to, to irritate my skin. Okay, drinking water is a no-brainer. Um, and sugar dehydrates the skin, as we know from alcohol and then other sugar. So that's why sugar and breathing fights bacteria, like doing a yoga class. So why? Because we are bringing oxygen to our tissues and oxygen fights bacteria. It's a no-brainer. So some things are simple, but looking at the entire thing holistically, I think is powerful. Um, prescriptive topicals. So topical retinoids, vitamin A, um, and so we have different types of tretinoids, right? We have beta carotene, which is kind of like your basement, and then we have retinol, uh, palmitate and then we have retinols retinoic acid and so, and so there we have it as we go along and of course we are um, digesting vitamin a as well as topical so they're very important it's important to use them i feel in the evening it's important if your skin is feeling too dry that you do what i call the pulse effect where you may be skipping a day alternating you know evenings maybe sending it back to three times a week because you're going to see great results with with all of these acne you're finding ingredients but then you may see that the skin starts to dry out and then guess what it's going to ignite the sebaceous gland to 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 pump out more oil so um that's just my word on um topical retinoids some countries they are banned just so you know um so that's something to be aware of all right so um, consideration reactions to tretinoin or topical retinoids and retinoic acid and here in this country you can buy it over the counter now so even though you can get some of these um, tretinoins over the counter we still need to be coaching our client um, you know I prefer them to purchase retinol products from you where you it's kind of almost time release it turns into retinoic acid in the skin it's less irritating in the tissue if of course you work with a, um, a, a medical director and you're able to have those prescriptive retinoids, it's very important to monitor the skin every time they come in and to ask them, how does your skin feeling, right? Because we could have some dryness, some erythema, some scaling and a definitely photosensitivity. So summer, summer's coming up in America, here in Atlanta, you know, we're gonna be in the 90s soon, high humidity, high sun, UV rays, and again, interestingly enough, UV rays can destroy bacteria, right? So, but I've always touted for years because I've been teaching LED and light therapy for, a, for probably 17 years now. Out of the 30, I've been a licensed professional. I call it precise dosage of light. So you go in the sun, the sun's gonna help destroy some of that bacteria on the tissue, but then too much sun could again, dry out the skin, ignite the sebaceous gland. So, and vitamin D production is so important to the skin. So I say to you, what are we looking at? We're looking at, when I go, I have a vitamin D deficiency. I take vitamin D every single day. I still need doses of light on my skin. So I am walking for 30 minutes a day if I'm in the sun, if I'm at the pool, I'm gonna do, I call it like 15 minutes aside, then I'm gonna put my sunscreen on. Um, I just, it's, I think vitamin D is very important for every organ of your body, but obviously it's the number one cause of, of you know, skin cancer and premature aging. So we have to be very careful, but, um, and we also have to be careful if we're using these high doses of vitamin A and going in the sun, um, 
it, it can cause problems as well. All right. So be working very carefully with your um, primary care physicians, your dermatologists, as well as your estheticians. Um, some benzoyl peroxide. Again, I'm not a fan of benzoyl peroxide. Um, I find it very drying. You got to make sure you're using, but it's it's very effective. So again, it's you know when Elaine has an Elaineism and an opinion, it's just an opinion. Okay. So but use sunscreen or clothing that, that now has um, obviously sun protection in it. Um, they say of the research that I have done to avoid um, benzoyl peroxide in conjunction with tretinoin, it seems to kind of, um, the, they say that the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That the, the tretinoins are not gonna be as effective when because they seem to oxidize when they're in with benzoyl peroxide, but you could alternate them, right? So you could be doing your, you know, your three days a week of your benzoyl peroxide and your two, and then your four days a week of your retinol. You could be alternating these um, pulse effect again, these treatment protocols. So, um, of course, you know, when you're when you're pregnant, be very careful with everything on your skin is going inside your body. We know that from all of our training with um, essential oils, how they can be a medicine on the skin and going inside the body. So, you know, again, you know, um, your hormones after you've stopped breastfeeding are going to normalize. Please give us a minute to stop breastfeeding and then we can start working on those issues. Topical antibiotics are very effective. All right, we do have them in gels and lotions, um, erythromycin as well as um, clindamycin. Um, and they seem to also be mixing those with other acne medicines as well. Be very careful for light sensitivity with some of these antibiotics. Um, again, some of the antibiotic side effects can be irritation, dryness, or antibiotic resistance. But that's for your client and their medical professional to discuss the pros and cons and is it right for them? And then just to know what services or sun or light therapies do we need to um, stop doing? And well, obviously if they're on steroids as well, we have some precautions with light therapy, IPL and um, other therapies as well. So we talked about post adolescence women experiencing hormonal acne. I talked about that for myself. Um, that I saw definitely on my chin and my jawline where when I was teenager, I definitely had acne in the T-zone where I was very oily combination skin. So you um, also, I know that a lot of the clients may have a premenstrual flare, right? Where they start getting um, a breakout close to on their cycle. Acne rosacea is definitely something that you're going to see, flashing, erythema, the cuprose or the tanklatasias, papules and pustules. Triggers of acne rosacea, things that can make it worse, can give you a flare up, alcohol, sunlight, hot beverages, spicy food, stress. And then of course, um, you know, you can have rosacea of the eye, just so you know that it's not restricted to just the skin. So I'd like to talk about some skincare ingredients that can improve acne topically that are very important. Salicylic acid, that is our beta hydroxy acid, that antibacterial, antimicrobial, but also anti-inflammatory. Again, if somebody's allergic to aspirin, that's gonna be a no-no. Vitamin C, why? Because there's studies out about its anti-inflammatory counter-irritant abilities to promote healing. Benzoyl peroxide that I talked about, um, vitamin A, sulfur, and then of course your alpha hydroxy acids, which are excellent, our glycolics, our mandelic. Um, all of them are gonna help, all your alpha hydroxy acids, but the ones that I really love for acne is my azelic acids, my glycolic, um, and my um, mandelic. Let, and salicylic, of course, which is your BHA. Now let's talk about exfoliants for a minute. I don't want, if they've got pustules um, or a lot of, I don't want a mechanical 
exfoliation with acne because I don't want them breaking open those pustules, spreading bacteria, causing any type of hyperpigmentation, etc. So a more chemical um, exfoliation um, would, in my mind, be better. So, for example, if you have an AHA gel that they can use at home, an AHA BHA gel, a home peel, we have an exfoliant that we can whip together to change it from a mechanical exfoliation into a chemical exfoliation. Um, zinc, interestingly enough, that is an awesome ingredient internally. Um, vitamin B3s, um, hyaluronic acid, because, you know, remember I went back to, um, a oily skin is a healthy skin. Well, we could still see some dehydration on the skin. So how do we hydrate that skin without adding too much oil that will clog the pore? So there's an interesting conversation there. And I think you've got some, some nice ingredients there, including hyaluronic acid that, that can help with that. We talked about, you know, um, the benzoyl peroxide and I love azelaic acid for um, also acne rosacea because it's also anti-inflammatory as well. Our clay masks, you know, our kaolin, our bento masks, anything that can kind of draw out. And of course, if you've got some kaolin with some camphor, fabulous, salicylic acid, sulfur, tea tree oil because it's antibacterial, right? Um, our alpha hydroxy acid and our antibiotics. So therapies that I like to do in the treatment room is of course um, LED, light emitting diodes. Remember my, pri my precise dosage of light. The red goes about seven, six, seven hundred nanometers into the skin. So that can really help with not only collagen and elastin, but really help with the redness and the irritation in the skin. The blue, which goes about 400 nanometers to that sebaceous gland, can really help destroy bacteria in the tissue. So guess what? I like to use both, the red and the blue, okay? Chemical peels, fabulous, especially, you, you can't do a microdermabrasion if you've got a lot of pustular acne. I need to control that pustular acne first. So I'm gonna do chemical peels. What chemical peels are gonna use? Sometimes it's gonna be a spa grade with that pH of three um, and about a, you know, a 10 to 30%. And then sometimes it's going to be a medical grade where it, it, it depends on how my skin is doing. I'm definitely going to be doing that pulse effect and creating, customizing those bespoke facials, the skin cocktails. It's going to be different every single time. My acne treatment is not going to be the same. I'm definitely doing extractions every time. If I don't do the extractions, your clients are going to do them at home. If you have availability intense pulse light, that's going to be an incredible tool for you. Chemical peels with blue LED, an incredible tool for you. Microcurrent, believe it or not, is going to increase ATP in the cell, which is also going to be very healing for acne. Microdermabrasion and oxygen facials. So oxygen facials are going to help with that bacteria on the surface of the skin. Also make your extractions easier. So you could combine your oxygen facials with your chemical peels with your LED. See now how I can create these acne facials, acne treatments. I am, if I'm going to steam the skin, it's going to be a short period of time. If I'm going to do chemical peels, I'm not going to steam the skin. Um, I'm definitely not going to massage the skin unless I'm doing a pressure point massage or a lymphatic drainage massage. I am not going to be massaging um, the face. All right, because again, why? Massage is going to stimulate the sebaceous gland. Does that make sense to you? Good. All right, so light therapy is definitely going to reduce redness on the skin. Um, LED is going to help tremendously. I'd use it every single time. We talked about the blue and the red. With the IPL treatments, this is, um, the, the bacteria is killed with pulse light and heat energy. And these they also shrink the sebaceous glands, which destroy our production. Um, Side effects may include pain, temporary redness, sensitivity to sunlight, crusting, peeling, changes in skin tone, and of course, it'll feel like an elastic band. So the IPL that we have at our clinic has a cooling me mechanism with the IPL, so that tends to help, but I always tell my client that it feels like elastic band snapping the skin. 
All right, chemical peels. Superficial chemical peels may control some types of acne and improve the appearance of the skin. Okay, so this can also help with sun damage and minor facial scarring. All right, so there is um, our non neutralizing and our neutralizing peels. Again, looking for our acne ingredients of our azalic, our mandelic, our salicylic acid, but all AHA peels, vitamin C are fabulous. And of course you can do a cocktail. Um, we have a fabulous facial. If any of you are um, a member of my um, pro site, I have this, I call it a double C facial where you do a vitamin C exfoliation and then you do a vitamin C peel, fabulous. So I want you to realize that you have so many tools in your toolbox um, right now to be able to control um, acne, okay? So, microdermabrasion, we have our crystal and our diamond tip. I happen to have both machines in my clinic. Um, it's a mechanical skin peeling treatment that uses an applicator to basically knock off the dead skin cells. And again, we don't want to have pustular acne and breakout or even scars for your pickers out there, your excoriators. If they are picking and there are scars and scabs, scabs especially, I cannot microderm the place if there is a scab present. So the, the crystal microdermabrasion is going to use velocity and crystals and knock off the dead skin cells. And where the microdermabrasion is going to basically um, use like an emery board, if you were, to, um, to basically take off those dead skin cells, dirt and debris. So it's a fabulous tool. You're able to toggle between your crystal flow and your vacuum suction so that you can do the right amount of treatment for each area because each area of the fair face is not going to be the same. You can combine your microdermabrasion with your chemical peels and your LED. I do my chemical peel first, neutralize, and then do my microdermabrasion. Manufacturer's guidelines and of course other estheticians may tell you to do it the other way. I am just telling you how I do it. Um, but again, I don't do that every time because if there's a lot of pustular activity, I've got to control that pustular activity first with my chemical peels, my LED, my IPL, whatever I have. And then I've got to go on to um, that microdermabrasion once I've controlled that. One size does not fit all. Combining effective skincare treatments, chemical peels, LED, microdermabrasion, oxygen, I love an, an, an acne treatment with chemical peels, oxygen therapy, and then LED. That's fantastic. So I want you, to, I want to encourage you to really be a brilliant thinking esthetician that can create these incredible services for your clients each time. A magnifying lamp, I told you, is extremely important because you need to protect yourself and your client. You need to see where you're working. You cannot analyze the skin effectively. Um, with a magnifying lamp, with a woods lamp, um, that's a good because you can see where the bacteria is. And of course, if you have a digital skin analysis, you can also see where the bacteria is on the skin, how much bacteria they have, and you can then monitor it every time they have a service and see the improvement in their skin just by using those topicals at home to alleviate the bacteria. Skin analysis is a 12 step process that I have, that I have, um, that I talk about in my skin analysis um, webinar and trainings, that we look at the skin, we touch and feel the skin so we can see what's going on in the surface of the skin, underneath the skin. I ask the client, what would you like to change about your skin? Because what their concerns are is what I'm gonna target my whole treatment around what they need. I know what I see. I'm going to mark down what I see, but their concerns are very important. I'm going to ask them what products they're using at home, what their AM and PM routine is. I'm going to check for the conditions of elasticity, dehydration, um, skin type, and of course, skin condition. I'm going to recommend home care products. I'm going to recommend future treatments because what I do today may change as we go along. I'm going to discuss um, what I'm going to do today and talk about what I'm going to focus on. And um, I'm also going to make sure I have that intake form. I'm going to make sure that I have a client history 
and medical and lifestyle intake, treatment documentation, informed consent, a release form, client expectations and concerns, short-term and long-term goals will be discussed. I'm gonna really talk to them about their home care, make sure that they're going home. For example, with the young gentleman, the track star, what I did was he definitely had a salicylic acid wash, which was a clarifying wash and a clarifying toner. But, you know, I gave him a, a packet of um, aesthetic wipes because obviously using, um, using a cotton round and getting caught in the beard is not going to work, right? So a loopy gauze or a um, aesthetic wipe, a, you know, a, a two by two or a four by four would be better. And I told him, because obviously he runs and gets in the shower, I said, hey, why don't you go ahead and use this, um, this clarifying wash in the shower? Um, and I saw it because then I knew he would use it, right? Um, also, um, when I saw any breakouts on the, the chest or the shoulders, I told him he could use that wash on the chest and the shoulder area as well. So that is um, my acne treatment today. I hope that you um, found it useful. I hope there's some, some things that, that you could say, hey, I'm doing this right, but not only that, these are things that I can put in my treatment room tomorrow. The things that I'm using today, the, thing that the, the, the items that I use today, I'm gonna to be able to use in my treatment room tomorrow. And another little tip I wanna give you is a lot of estheticians during COVID-19 are offering free skin analysis. And another thing I think is fabulous is sending them at-home facials that they can send the products to them and give them the protocols and even maybe a one-on-one -on -one with a Zoom or your, um, if you have an iPhone or, or um, a device that you could do one-on-one -on -one facials with them. So you can show them how to use the products and do the facial with them so that they're taking care of their skin at home. I always like to give you some takeaways and some um, ideas of ways that you can stay engaged with your client and earning money, but helping them with their skincare goals as well and staying inspired, right? Because we have to be insp inspirational to be inspired. So by you inspiring your clients and helping your clients during this time, I think is huge. Hi, Josh, how did I do? You did fabulous. Uh, someone who suffered from acne, I learned a whole lot. So I was riveted and I'm excited to be able to share your knowledge with people when I do product knowledge, because I think that helps me even more. So now it's time for the question and answer portion. So we've got my favorite part, questions. bring on the Q&A. And of course, remember, I'm going to answer these questions and we'll be emailing them out as well because we won't be able to get to every single one. Definitely not. So someone asked, is keratosis pilaris a form of acne? No, but it is a, it is a skin disorder. And I have seen great results with, I see a lot of people with it. It is a follicle blockage. I have seen a lot of um, um, good results with using some sort of chamois in the shower, exfoliating that area, um, a, a salicylic wash or a, a AHA wash on the body is extremely helpful with that. So that is something that you can recommend to your client is to use the exfoliant in that area. All right. Anonymous says, I've heard that benzoyl peroxide can contribute to PIH. What are your thoughts on that? And do you believe it to be true? Polycystic, um, I think that's what she's talking about. Um, I have not heard that. So I, I'm not going to contribute to, hmm, not, I'm not sure about that. that. That one I would have to do some research. Again, I, because, I'm not, I, because I'm, not a huge, I'm not a huge benzoyl peroxide fan, me personally, um, so I'm not, you know, I'm just going to give you the general knowledge um, of that, but there are plenty of product lines that, that have benzoyl peroxide in there. You know, I'm like about first, you know, harm and whatever we put on our skin affects what's going on in our body. Megan asks, can your skin change skin types from like oil to normal or oily, or we always have the skin type we are born with? Good question. I always say that the skin that you're born with is the skin that you die with. So it is in your DNA. So you, if you're a combination skin, which let's say the majority of us are, I'm a combination skin. I was very oily in the T-zone as a teenager. But now as I've aged, 
my oil production in my skin is not the same. Why? Because of estrogen. I always say estrogen is your fountain of youth, right? So, but um, my skin is still is dehydrated, right? It's lacking moisture and it's now allopedic lacking oil. So, but it's still a combination skin. Your skin type does not change. And I am doing my skin analysis webinar again, which is one of my favorite webinars. So please join me in that next one. All right, let's see here. We have another anonymous one. It says, acne scarring that has no indentations in the skin, but hyperpigmentation. Can this be removed through chemical peels? Well, the hyperpigmentation can be improved. And acne scarring, if it's, if it's very mild, remember, I mean, if it's, if it's deep, we need to resurface that area. And obviously Fitzpatrick's, you know, three with caution, four, five, and six, resurfacing is an issue. So I would have to see the skin, and I would say that, you know, hyperpigmentation, definitely we have a lot of tools in our toolbox, but it depends on the depth of the scar, you know, how long the scar has been there. And then we can start doing microdermabrasion and chemical peels and continue to take our before and after pictures, but we're not going to promise improvement. We are going to see some improvement. And then another anonymous person, so many anonymous people asking questions. Don't be scared, y'all. We're friendly. Um, they ask, how do you avoid breakouts after tweezing or waxing the face? Well, um, if you're going to your esthetician, definitely um, high frequency is a great tool to use after waxing and um, tweezing. They also, we also have a lot of waxing products that contain salicylic acid, small amounts, um, 10 skin, some brands out there, and then there's also bump, Gone. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know all the brands, but but a lot of them, a lot of post waxing gels and creams that you can use. I want you to make sure the tweezer has it be has it been sanitized and sterilized, right? Even if you're using it at home, you've got to wash it with antibacterial soap, fully immerse it in your barber side, or wipe it with your barber side wipes. Right, spray it down with alcohol. Are your makeup brushes clean? You know, there's, are you touching that area? We know now, don't touch your face. But you know, I see a lot of people, they've just had their brows tweezed and they've had a beautiful brow tint and they're touching it because it looks so lovely. Don't touch your face. I think you guys should have like little cards to hand out to your clients. My glasses, right? What do I do in my spa? What I do, a kind of fun thing, is I always give my clients that have, I clean their glasses for them and then I give them a little alcohol pad, you know, the little little pads, pre-wrap ones. And I say, please, rem I'm reminding you to wipe your glasses every day. All right, let's see. There was one that someone asked about, is there a supplement you can take to reduce the androgen hormone other than getting a prescription? I'm sure there are a lot of supplements. I can, I love Dr. Wheel. If you want to go to his website and look at acne and androgen and what supplements. I am not going to prescribe supplements at my aesthetic level. But again, you know, there are supplements that can regulate the hormone. I always recommend to go get a test and see, is that indeed a problem? They can test for your hormone level. All right, so we've got a few minutes left. So we've got a couple more. People are asking a lot about hormonal acne. That seems to be quite the topic. Well, it's a big problem because you're a teenager, you have it. And then in your 30s, you start getting that perimenopausal acne again. So it's a huge problem, but it is hormonal. But we can definitely help with our oxygen treatments, right? And our high frequency. Because a lot of times, I think that the hormonal acne tends to be cystic in nature. And they're angry and they sore. They hurt. So the high frequency... The clay masks um, are very helpful with those um, types of things. Anything that can, in, that can reduce inflammation in the tissue is awesome. And IPL, of course, if you have access to that. So we're going to do one more question, and then I'm going to kind of go over how this is going to end and how the certificates work. So don't leave, everybody. So just hang on with us a few more minutes, all right? So we've got one more question from Unique, and I'm going to expand. So Unique asked, what book do you recommend for those, for those who want acne resources? But I would just say, do you have any resources that you recommend to go research acne outside of obviously this, this webinar? Right, well, definitely the American Association of, of Dermatology has um, great resources on acne. 
on learning the, the different types of acne. So, so that's important. As far as the books go, I know Dr. Puglisi has a really good diseases and disorders book geared towards estheticians. I know my friend Mark Lees has um, written a lot of books. You know, I am, I am an indiv in industry professional first and I'm also an educator. So I love to share my knowledge and um, other leaders in the industry that have done such great work. Dr. Mark Lees has done an incredible job with his books and his trainings on acne. So he's a great one um, to go and look at his book. I believe he has two or three um, for, for, for that sort of research. And I know that what's really helped me is working on other acne, I will tell you. That living laboratory that I always talk about, me being able to work on a lot of acne clients has given me guides. And we have um, a lot of acne um, skincare protocols um, on, on our website as well. And remember, it's always one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake as far as any skincare treatment goes, is that I like to be progressive rather than aggressive and really walk, to walk, not run, towards the skincare goal using those tried and tested ingredients that I went through in this webinar, using the tried and tested protocols that I discussed in this webinar. And thank you, Elaine, for your information. And everybody have a great Friday and happy weekend. I'll see you next Friday. I can't wait. It's going to be a fun webinar. Bye. And your skin treatments. Bye, everybody. Love you all.